One of my favourite descriptions of test-driven development comes from Josh Graham. He said that our objective in test-driven development was to create tiny universes where the software exists to do one thing and to do it well. I think that's a lovely description. It's a great way of thinking about our tests and, and the, the important fact that we want to try and exert complete control in order to be get, able to get repeatable and reliable results. We define these tiny universes in which our code is evaluated. The complexity, though, tends to happen at the edges of the universes. The points at which the real, the real world intrudes on our system and starts to interact with it. The difficult bits in test-driven development are often at the points at which our code is interacting with the stuff outside of our direct control. Disk subsystems, databases, networks, and perhaps most intrusively of all, time. So how do we keep our mini universes clean and control the variables so that we can get these repeatable, reliable, deterministic results in our tests? In this episode, I'll talk about one of the trickier aspects of testing, testing with time. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. Time presents some of the interesting problems when it comes to testing. Despite modern physicists not being too sure if time really exists, it tends to get in the way. Let's imagine that we have a system that processes orders. We're going to have something that looks vaguely like this. We're going to be able to place an order with some parameters of some kind, and at the end we're going to get an order back in some form. And now let's imagine that we'd like to be able to test this code. So here's a simple example of a test. We're going to place an order for a thing, get an order back, and then we're going to assert that the order that we got back equaled the orders that we expected to get back in that scenario. Now, what if that order included a timestamp? What if internally, as the order is generated, we create a timestamp and attach that to the order? How does our comparison work then? How do I recreate a test that will work? What value do I expect in my expected version of the order if time is going on behind our backs? Our tiny universe has been breached Time from our world has leaked into the universe that we're trying to control and it's going to affect the results of our test. That's a problem. So how do we control the variables when one of the variables is time and it's just ticking along underneath us all of the time? If we want our tests to be deterministic, there are really only two options here. We can either choose to ignore time altogether or take control of it in the context of the test. The first of these uh, approaches, uh, ignoring time, is simple. It's, it, it's nice. It, what we're going to do is that we're going to filter out time-based values and we're going to ignore them in the context of any evaluations within our tests. In our example, we could imagine that we, when we compare the, the, the expected order with the actual order, we just ignore the timestamp. We don't bother comparing that part of the order. The huge advantage to this approach is that it's simple. All we've got to do is that we've got to play with our evaluation code a little bit, the point at which we evaluate our orders in our example, um, and that's all that we need to do. But we can miss errors this way. It can prevent any hope of helping us test long-running scenarios or more complicated scenarios that involve time as a significant factor. So it's limited in its approach. Forgive me for interrupting myself for a moment, but if you find my YouTube videos useful, please do subscribe and click on the bell notification icon so that we can keep you informed of new episodes. Um, if you are, enjoy discussions about continuous delivery, DevOps, BDD, TDD, and software engineering in general, then why not sign up for our mailing list? The de details are below. On the mailing list, you'll get information about the training courses that, uh, that I offer um, and many other things, along, uh, along with free how-to guides uh, like this one, how to assess your continuous delivery capability that we're publishing this week. The details to join are in the description below if you're interested in any of that.
Now, back to testing with time. We talked about two different options. We can ignore time or we can take control of it. Clearly the more interesting of these two is taking control. So what does that mean? What does that involve? We're going to treat time as an external dependency. Uh, rather like we described uh, in an earlier video um, uh, about mocking out and faking external dependencies, we're going to mock out and fake time in the context of our system while it's being tested. The advantages to this are that it's exceedingly flexible. We can do all sorts of very sophisticated things. We can simulate almost any time-based scenario, however long that takes, uh, and with time under control of the test case. The downside is it's slightly more complicated in terms of the infrastructure that we need to create to support it. So let's go and have a look at what that takes. Let's imagine this test case. We've got a, we're, we're testing some code that represents a library and we're going to test that a book is overdue after a month. So our test should be overdue after one month. We're going to um, uh, borrow a book called Continuous Delivery from the library. We're going to assert that the book is not yet overdue. Then we're going to time travel forwards, four weeks plus one day. And then we're going to assert that the book is now overdue. And that's our test case. Clearly, the interesting parts in this test case, in this context, are the time travel lines. So what does that mean? Time travel forwards. Let's imagine the next layer down at the point at which we're, we're asking the system to time travel. So what are we going to do? So we're going to have a string that tells us the, the you know, the, the, that represents the duration, in our case, plus, plus four weeks, plus one day. Um, and then we're going to get the current time we're going to work out how long plus four weeks and plus a day is in milliseconds, uh, and that's our duration. And then we're going to ask our system under test uh, to report to lie about the time. When anything asks to get the time, we're going to tell it it's going to be now plus the duration that we asked for. And so we'll have, in effect, fast forwarded in time and time travel. What we're talking about is something like this. We're going to have uh, our system under test. And if we've got any system that relies on time, somewhere deep in the code, whatever the technology you're using, there's going to be a line that looks a little bit like this. Somewhere you're going to be reaching out to the system and asking for the time. And then surrounding that is the system itself and then our test infrastructure and then the test cases that, that we're evaluating. What we'd like to be able to do is create an instruction like time travel forwards four weeks. So we're going to, if we're going to do that in an existing system, the only thing that we can re realistically do is change the, si the system clock. And that's fraught with all sorts of difficulties and dangers. So that's not a good idea. So what we're going to do instead is that when our system asks for the time, we're going to insert our own version of a clock. So instead of asking the system clock, for the time, the system, our system under test is going to ask our clock for the time. And now we can start to cheat. Now we can get our clock to tell lies about the time. So our test says time travel forwards a week. We're going to work out what that is in milliseconds. We're going to communicate that back to some kind of stub that's plugged into our system that allows us remotely to interact with the clock within our system under test. And under normal circumstances, our clock is just going to do what it did before. It's going to go to the system clock and give and, and report the time as that. But under the special circumstances when we're running in a test environment, it's going to lie about the time. It's going to do what it's told. If our tests tell it to tell uh, report back a different time, that's what it's going to do to the system. And now as far as the system is aware, it's time travel. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's in a new time. And that allows us to have a great deal of uh, uh, control. Now, these kinds of tests are a little unusual. So we probably want to differentiate them from other kinds of tests. Uh, one of the techniques that we've used in the past is to kind of tag test cases with different attributes. So we could mark this particular test case as a time travel test. 
The reason for that is that we don't really want to be time traveling at two different rates within the same system. That way we would quickly uh, dig ourselves into a fairly deep hole. Instead, what we will do is that we will isolate these, these, these time travel tests. We will only run those time travel tests in a system that's, that they are, they control. And now we can start to imagine tagging the, tagging the tests with, with these, with these identifiers and then at test runtime, differentiating how we deploy them. Here is a, here's a lovely little animation uh, that we used when we were building the exchange at LMAX. Uh, this is a, a representation of our test infrastructure running tests. Most of the tests are uh, on the uh, right hand side and they are using a shared test environment and testing lo uh, running those tests in parallel. But for these unusual time travel tests, they're on the, the top left hand side and each of those test cases has its own dedicated environment. And you can see the, the test environment being dy dynamically allocated as it runs to, to service the needs of different tests, starting up new, new versions of the system so that we can time travel them and then closing them down at the conclusion of the test. This approach gives us nearly complete control. We can evaluate long-running uh, scenarios uh, and, and get great feedback on what's going on. We can look at uh, uh, fast-forwarding to daylight savings time uh, uh, events and seeing whether our system is going to work through those or fast-forwarding long-running scenarios like borrowing a book from a library. It's probably not a great idea to travel backwards in time because that's going to that's probably going to confuse the system quite a lot but you've got complete control of the rate and the distance with which you can travel forwards in time the ability to fast forward allows you to test these long running scenarios in very short time scales we could test when we were building our exchange we could test scenarios that would take in some cases months to play out and we could test those in milliseconds. So fast forwarding gives us a great deal of control. It also allows the, us to simplify the comparison. Going back to our initial example, we can just compare the order. We can say we expect, to re, uh, we, we expect this, the time to be at this value and we set that value and we get the answer back. There is another common time related issue with tests and that is about uh, particularly in concurrent systems the problems of race conditions and the the desire to put weights or sleeps into our tests i'm not going to cover that today we'll talk about that in a future episode but my quick piece of advice is don't just don't just don't do it we'll talk about reasons why and what you do instead in future our example so far is really at the level of behavior-driven development, executable specifications, larger scale acceptance tests of the system. And time travel tests are an invaluable tool for, for those kinds of tests. But a slightly simpler version of the technique is just as valid at the low level TDD star unit tests. Here's a quick example. Uh, let's imagine we've got the setup for a test and here it is. We're going to we're going to create a clock class and an abstraction of, of my clock to, to report the time. And I'm going to generate a fake version of that using a mocking library. Then we're going to ask that fake version to report a particular timestamp. So when my code goes and asks for the timestamp, it's the, the clock's going to lie to it and it's giving, going to give it the version that I want it to. And now we're going to create our expected order with that timestamp the expected timestamp. Now, when our test goes ahead and we place the order, um, uh, our code looks like this. We can do the comparison with the expected order and the order that we generated during the course of the, the, the test evaluation. And our code looks like this. We're going to store the clock because that's the one that we're going to use. And at the point at which we place the order, we're going to generate a new order and we're going to ask the clock for the time. Remember, this is the fake clock and it's going to lie about the time. It's going to give the, give the value that we, that we generated and stored in our expected order. So when we do the comparison, our comparison is going to pass because the orders are going to be identical. So when testing with time, fake the time and you will find that your tests are a lot easier to write and a lot more reliable.
Thank you very much for watching.